All right, folks, we're going to be making something called a coil pot. So these are coil pots like you see right here on the screen. Uh, you can even make really cool designs on them. They can be smoothed out like these were right here. You can tell these were hand built as well. Or they can be have really cool designs on them and really cool paint. Or you can leave the coils on here like in a pot like this one. Those of you at home, I had told you to buy something called air dry clay. You're going to be using this. And those of you uh, at school, you're going to be using the kiln because I have a kiln room. All right, folks, welcome to another day with Mr. Flores in the art classroom. Today, we are going to be practicing with clay and how to make some clay pots. All right. Tomorrow, we're going to be working and making something called a coil pot. OK, and today I'm going to show you how to make those. But let's first let's go over um, what the actual stages of clay are. Uh, some terms that we need to use when we're making clay, I'm sorry, building clay, and of course the instructions in order to make our clay pots for tomorrow, okay? So first, let's go over the six stages of clay uh, really quickly, and uh, you should have written down these notes. So the first one was slip. So slip is a watered down clay. So basically that's just adding clay and water together to make a slip, okay? And then plastic or you can call it also wet, is just when you take the clay right out of the bag or the container and it's very uh, uh, squishy and it's very uh, mobile, you can, you can form it in any way you want to. Leather hard is when it starts to start drying and you really can't move it, all right? And if you move it, it'll just break, okay? So leather hard when it's almost uh, what you call bone dry. But leather hard, you can still carve it and manipulate it just a little bit. So bone dry is when it's completely dry, there is no water in it whatsoever, and it's ready to go into something called the kiln. The kiln is an oven and is used to fire up your pot once it is ready. So it says bone dry, clay that is dry and ready to be fired. So fired is just another word for putting in the oven. Very fragile, also called greenware. Okay, that's right before you put it into the kiln to, to fire it. Bisqueware, clay that has been fired once in the kiln. Okay, so we're going to be putting, once we make our clay pots, we're going to be putting it into the kiln. And that's what's called, uh, afterwards, it comes out as bisqueware. And it can never be turned back into wet clay once you add water to it. And the very last one is glazeware. That's when you add uh, the paint to it. The glazeware that makes the pot all nice and shimmery and shiny like glass. And you can use it to actually to eat out of. All right, let's continue. So we have our basic stages of clay, and we're gonna go over uh, some of these with you as well in order to make a clay pot, something called scoring, slip, stick, and then smooth. All right, these uh, tools I'm gonna go over with you tomorrow. And then these, these are gonna be the steps we are in order to make a clay pot. So let's go over these right now. All right. So if you notice in the back of this paper, I put, uh, it says match the vocab words with the pictures. And I made it easy for you where it says part one. If you notice, it says part one, but you have to kind of look at it very carefully. So part one, it says wedging the clay. So let's go ahead and write that on there, wedging. So that's wedging the clay. Okay. And then part two, it says making the base. So let's go ahead and write these two down so we can start making our clay pots. So number two, or part two, making the base. All right, and let me tell you the supplies you'll be needing for today. So today you are going to need a toothpick and that's for uh, something called scoring. Okay, you're going to need something to work on top of. So I have parchment paper or you can work on wax paper. Uh, some a cup of water, of course, our clay and then maybe a butter knife or not an actual knife, but a butter knife or even a plastic uh, butter knife. So these clay pots, uh, this is something you would use the coil method. All right. And see how they're all built up going to top. This is sort of like a plate. And these are just some decorative bowls. You could use them for eating maybe, but they're very tiny. So um, I wouldn't use them for eating out of cereal or anything like this. So I'm going to show you how to make some bowls just like this. Okay. We start off with part one called wedging the clay. 
So wedge in the clay, just like if you're making dough or making tortillas or bread, you're going to have to wedge the clay. When you wedge the clay, that is getting all the air bubbles out of it and you're just uh, going back and forth and just squishing it, okay? I'm gonna tell you some don'ts what not to do. You are not to hit it against the table. You are not to keep on squishing it and squishing it because if you keep on doing it, it's gonna eventually get stuck to the table. So every time you squish it, then pick it right back up and turn it over, okay? I would only give it about two squishes and then that's good enough or else it's gonna start sticking. If you feel like you got it too flat, just keep on folding it and we can wedge it all over again, okay? So this is a wedging. I want you to get, uh, what we're gonna do is just make a small little pot for today, just a pretend practice pot, all right? So then I want you to do next is cut a circle out of it, all right? And this one is making the base, okay? I want you to get it uh, maybe the size of a pancake, but no bigger than a hamburger patty. So a big as a pancake. So I'm just gonna cut a small circle. And it's not gonna have to be a perfect circle because this is just a practice one, okay? Like I was telling you. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that circle out and put this extra clay off to the side. And I'm gonna form it so it could be nice and uh, round. So again, about the size, thickness of a pancake, but no bigger than a hamburger patty, all right? Perfect, I'm gonna squish it down just a little bit, just so it could be nice and flat, but it still has that nice round base, okay? Now let's go to our next step, part three. Part three tells us to making the coils. So let's go right down here and put on there, making the coils. All right. So the reason why we make coils or the reason why this is called a coil pot is because you're building it up with coils. Coils, think of like springs or rolls of uh, a rope or snake. So we've all played with Play-Doh before or even, um, you know, maybe some clay. And how you make coils is you get some clay and you squish it. You're gonna roll it back and forth so you can make a snake, all right? And since our pot is just for a practice one for today, it's very small. So we're gonna make very small coils. So this is way too big and let's keep on going until we make it smaller, okay? And I'm gonna tell you why we have our toothpick and water out in just a second. So let's go ahead and make a little bit smaller and smaller until we have a nice thin coil, uh, sort of like a baby snake, all right? Probably about the size of your pinky. All right, I think that's perfect, okay? About the size of a little bit thicker than a pencil about a, or about the size of a pencil. Now we're gonna do something next after making the coils is part four is assembling the coil pot. So let's go ahead and write that down, assembling. the coil pot. If you notice, there's this tool. Instead of using a wire tool, we're gonna to be using a toothpick and that is called scoring, okay? So I'm gonna write next to it, scoring. If you notice this one, it has a sponge and it's making going around the base. That's called adding the slip. So I'm gonna go ahead and write slip on there. Okay, I'm gonna tell you what all those words mean in just a second. All right, so now we're going to get our base and we're gonna do something called scoring. Let me go ahead and zoom in. And we're gonna score and that's just barely scratching it. We're not gonna put giant deep scratches. And what you're doing is, once you're adding these scratches, you're also gonna add these scratches or scoring to your coil. Think of them as teeth connecting to each other. And let me show you what that means. So think of it as I was taught as, think of it as teeth connecting or even a zipper when it's connecting together. Because if it's going flat, if they're connecting flat, they're just gonna slip right off. So we're going ahead and we went ahead and scored the base. And now we score, let me zoom in for you. And now we score the coil. And you're going to have to do this every time when you're building up your clay pot. And again, this is called the coil method, all right, when you're building a clay pot. So now I have my scoring. If you notice, I didn't do, um, there's not like, 
you know, giant uh, scratches in there. It's just making some nice small scratches to make it stick to our other side. Now we do something called adding the slip, okay? Adding the slip is simply putting your finger into the water and going around the rim of the base. And a slip is just a sticky substance of water making it stick to the base and the coil together. So now we have this extra piece. What do we do with that? We can get our toothpick and just simply press it to cut it. And we pinch it together. All right. If you ever confused, you can go back and reference the pictures that I showed you. So we did our scoring. We added our slip. And then we put the coil on and we cut off the excess. And now we're going to do is it says to dip our finger into the water and then we're going to uh, smooth it out, okay? We followed these steps. When we did this, we scored it, added the slip, we stuck it on, and now we smooth it out, which is our last step, okay? So we get our finger, dip it into the water, and we smooth it out, okay? We smooth it out, that way you can get a nice, and that way you can stick to it. And if you feel like your finger is too big or it doesn't work as correctly, you can always use this tool, the little knife, to smooth it out as well. But you want to make this nice and smooth. You don't want a bowl or a pot or even a cup to be uneven or misshaped. Notice how I'm putting my fingers on the edge of this and I'm holding it so that way the wall of this first coil won't fall off. And I'm just barely going against the wall so I can not have that line right there. See how I'm making it nice and smooth in there? You don't want this line to be right there. You don't want that at all, okay? All right, folks, can't wait to see if these all come out. Go ahead and fill to write a, a second layer if you like to build it up to make a little tiny bowl or a little tiny cup. Remember, you need to score and then add the slip every time with water around the rim to make your little coil pot. Also, you can leave the coils on the outside looking like a snake or you can uh, use your tool to smooth it out or even use your finger to smooth it out. I'll give you some more instructions tomorrow and I can't wait to see how these little ones come out.